Welcome to Chatbox with Sam. Today's guest is actor Marco St. John. Marco has much experience in the industry. He's got very interesting stories to tell. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome Marco St. John to Chatbox with Sam. How are you? Hey, Samantha. Very happy to be here with you. And, and I'm very honored for you that you're on my show today. Welcome. I have a few questions to ask you and then if you can share your stories of your life and the industry, that would be amazing. All right. I, I know you were on Thelma and Louise and that's a big hit with everybody. <laughs> ah. well, Clint too, so that was a big hit. Absolutely. So Marco, if you were to encourage the younger generation, what would be the main focus? Oh, the younger generation. I try to tell them to keep a uh, hold the grip on themselves because the one thing about Hollywood and film and television, you start to become successful. A lot of people, it goes to their heads and it causes them to behave in uh, unusual ways. They can get into <laughs> a lot of trouble. They can get mixed up with uh, drugs, the wrong people, you, you name it. And, uh, and the, the better you, you keep a grip on yourself and uh, more of your talent is going to come across. I thought, uh, you know, I was thinking about it because uh, I made the Thelma and Louise with Ridley Scott, and uh, Ridley also directed uh, uh, one of my favorite movies, Gladiator, and Russell Crowe, for yes. instance. And I know he was a wild man when he was younger and everything, but he always held on to himself. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the best actors we have in our country and uh, in, in the world, really. But he always kept uh, kept his head together, and he was a he. You know, he did wacky things too, but he would he whenever he did, he realized what he was doing, and he brought it down. I'm talking about in the personal life. I'm not talking about on the uh, on the camera. Yeah. And uh, uh, young people, uh, I, if there was any one thing that I would tell a young person that was interested in going someplace in the business, it would be that: keep a hold of yourself, give it over to God. Give it over to, uh, to some better influence on you, but don't lose your head. No. You know, just paying you a lot of money and giving you the, the right parts. Don't, uh, don't, go, don't let it blow up your head. Because if you do, you're going you're gonna to pay for it. Believe me, most people do. Be a, be a good person, a right person. Always be fair, be honest, be uh, truthful. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, me personally, I believe in God, and I go to I go to church, and I, that's always helped me. And uh, keeps you straight, and uh, and you've got to uh, you've got to think of the other person. You got to think of, of the country, our great country that we live in. You got to respect it, and, and be an honorable man and or woman, and uh, and and trust trust in God, trust in other people, mm -hmm. and uh, trust in yourself. Because God will, if he'll be standing behind you, you you'll, you'll get it right. I know we all get scared when we get a lot of pressure put on us and we start, we're in, in, the, in the main event, so to speak. And uh, we think everybody's watching us and they are. And yeah. uh, just got to keep it, uh, you keep your cool head and uh, hold on to it and believe, trust in yourself. Believe in yourself and believe in God and believe in other people. People right. are good. You know, the wise guys and the smart Alex, uh, they don't, they, they really they pay for it. They do. <laughs> I know. I know. I wish, and there's a wise old saying, Marco, they say, I wish I knew then what I know now. Right. You right. know, it's a great, great wise saying because it's like, gosh, what could I have done differently? But maybe we wasn't supposed to do things differently. Well, one maybe of the things, that human beings, if you look at us, we're really we're really great. I can understand why God made us a lot of times because we, we can give a lot of pleasure to uh, other people and to each other and to the world. Yeah. And we can do a lot of great things. It's just when we get too self-centered and too selfish and that we get mean and nasty and, you know, do, do become bad people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Marco. What inspired you into this career? Uh, well, you know, I, uh, I went to uh, Fordham University in New York City, and I, I wanted to be—I was going to be a lawyer. My father had been a lawyer, so I wanted to be a lawyer. And then I—I—I uh, I, I don't know. I, something was—I went to—I uh, went to see a Broadway play, and while I was sitting there watching the play, I said, "Wait a minute, I can do that." 
<laughs> something, something hit me about it, and I said, and, and you, they get paid for it. I can make a living doing that. So I just uh, slowly did one thing or another thing, and then I, I, I said, this is it. This is what I want to do. And I did it for most all the rest of my life. Uh, you know. So uh, I did a lot of Broadway. I did a nine plays on Broadway, one of them opposite the big star, Julie Harris. And uh, uh, the play ran for a couple of years. I was only in it for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did a lot of, uh, done a lot of films. Not well, not a lot. Some people, like uh, Russell Crowe, he's, he's trying to make me 100. I've done 50, something like that. Oh, would you, like to, would you like to name some of the films that you've been in? And then... I did the one with Clint Eastwood uh, called uh, uh, Tightrope, Tightrope. Okay. I, yeah, I was the I was the bad guy. I was the killer. I was killing every all. Of, all they had all of these good looking women that break fly one in from Hollywood, and I'd I'd, I'd bump her off. You know? <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> one time says to me, says to me, Marco, you want you want any help there? <laughs> the leading lady of that uh, that week was a beautiful girl, and she was in a hot tub, and, uh, <laughs> and I <laughs> snuck up behind her and. Trying to help, I said no thanks. I can take care of it myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, and Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise, and uh, oh, let's see, uh, uh, the, the Punisher, uh, uh, Fantastic Four, Urban. I don't know. Hard Target, Bad Lieutenant, State of Grace. I don't know a lot of them. I can say uh, the. the and uh, and do you have the photograph of you on set with the Samuel and Louise? Could you right, yeah. hold that up for us? Yeah, I told everybody I thought I was supposed to be the love interest, but then they said, no, that's Brad Pitt. And, uh, <laughs> I was a truck driver, the, the, the horrific truck driver. They blow oh, up yes. Uh, yeah, there's there's uh, Ridley Scott, and that's me on uh, on one end, and uh, Gina and... and uh, Gina Davis and uh, Susan Sarandon, and that one guy in the middle there, he was a stunt coordinator. Uh, and uh, it's a great, great group. We were out in the, uh, uh, we were out in Utah, I believe. We shot a lot of, of it out there. And uh, it was a great time. I mean, I remember that we were sitting around having lunch on red and white checkered tablecloths one day of being served. I said, here people pay thousands of, uh, come thousands of miles and pay thousands of dollars too, probably to get there, to have an experience like that and we're getting paid for it. I so know. I said, <laughs> awesome. This awesome. is a way to earn your living. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's a wonderful time. Uh, uh, Ridley Scott, uh, a great director, as, as everyone knows. And a, gr a great man. I really, we got along. We were pretty good buddies, and I, I enjoyed working with him and and for him. And uh, it was, you know, a really good experience. Gina Davis. And Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon. Yeah, yes, Gina, lovely ladies. I know. I was a single guy at the time, and Gina was, uh, uh, you know, I we kind of liked each other. And I said, hmm, not. A, but I said, I wouldn't, I'm not going to mess around with a married woman, try to make an advance to a married woman. <laughs> finished the movie, I got home and somebody said, you know, Gina Davis got a divorce from that guy. And she was oh, in the Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should have asked first. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> She's a wonderful, wonderful you, girl, wonderful woman. Yes. Also, so, oh, I did a lot of, uh, now, you know, I was an actor. I wanted to be an actor, for instance, uh, one of the, Best things that I I done, uh, you know the uh, uh, San Diego Shakespeare Festival mm -hmm. uh, in San Diego. It's probably the top Shakespeare festival in in our country in in our hemisphere, except for the one that's up in uh, Canada. Uh, that's very outstanding as well. But to make a long story short, I was with a theater company and the director. They asked him to direct the uh, down there. They called him and said they wanted him to do Hamlet. He's, and they said, you can bring your own Hamlet. And he turned around to me, says, you ready to play Hamlet? And I said, gulp, yes, I've been waiting. I've been working, I had, I've been working on it ever since I was a, a young man. We learned uh, fencing at the New York Fences Club and the, the guy who was the head coach was uh, the coach of the American Olympic team. Mm -hmm. So uh, he taught me how to fence and how to do, he, think he did the choreographed the duel for that. Anyway. So we did, uh, I played the Hamlet at the uh, 
Shakespeare Festival, but they, the New York Times sent a uh, uh, their critic out, and so did the Los Angeles Times sent their critic. It was a long time ago, but uh, they they flew the New York Times uh, their critic there, and they did a review. And the director one day after they'd been there, he says, "I want to show you something." He said, "Did you see this?" And he held up the review. Now I'm 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 kind of being a, I, I was very proud of it all my life. And uh, he, he said uh, something, he said, well, it's a, uh, usually you see Hamlet, it's, uh, you know, it's very, he said, but anyway, I forget why, but he said, Marco St. John played Hamlet. And then he said, it's not, a, he was a very, and I played it, it was a young man. It was a, they called it like the hippie Hamlet. I was always <laughs> 21 or something. Usually it's an older uh, man playing the, Hamlet, he has to be older because he has to be uh, able to act. He has to have his te acting's technique. Yes. And, uh, and uh, I was, had a lot thrown at me. I was tw I was younger than I looked. I was like 26 or seven at the time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, he said, he, he, he starts yelling at them across the table and he, he's not the kind of young man you'd want to invite to a, a, a party at your home for fear that he'd tear everything up apart and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he but he is however the best time with i've seen in the past decade oh that's nice piece yeah that's pretty well considering the people who had played hamlet in that decade we're talking about big time we're not talking about just stuck out in the woods someplace you know because the uh, uh it, it went over really well and it uh ran for the whole summer and, and it became the, they could like i say they called it the hippie hamlet because it was about young it was about the cop, young people in a world run by older people got you and, uh, and uh, so it, it spoke to a lot of young people and they came we were sold out the whole for the whole summer and oh they, that's they, incredible yeah the new york times review and the, and the los angeles times review they just put it over the roof <clears throat> and uh, it did really well. Anyway, long, I did a lot of Shakespeare after that in New York, the New York Shakespeare Festival, and I, I did a lot of Broadway plays. So, uh, so I, I had a very good career, especially as a young person. That's fantastic. And you went to England too, didn't you? In school, I went, to, I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, RADA, for a while. I only I didn't stay for too long because after I'd been there, uh, matter I was going to stay for the two years, but then I realized. I, I did most of those. I was like I say, I was about 22. I was graduated from college, and most of those kids were like 17, and you know, and there was a couple other ones that were 19 or 20. But I felt I was, I was in the wrong place. So I talked to the, the, the heads of the school, and they they could see my my way of thinking, but they said they still would like me to stay, and but they understood why I felt that I needed to go back yeah. and get. And I told him, I said, yeah, I want to play Hamlet. And I can do what I need to do back in New York. I was living in New York at the time. Well, yeah. yeah. And the thing is, in England, they left school at 16. So they're in college at 18. Seven, they're in college, started college at 16, 17, 18. So yeah. that's why, so they were all younger, you know, and you finished school yeah. later in America. You, you're 18 and then going into college at 18. And they've already been there for two years. Big age difference. Gotcha. Thank you so much. So, has music influenced your life in any way? And could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, well I always loved music. I was, uh, you know, I, when I was in college I, uh, I, up in New York City, I'm, I worked as a as an usher at the Metropolitan Opera. So I, <laughs> I loved the Garden Club <laughs> Opera and loved music and uh, and I loved everything popular music, rock and roll, and, and all that stuff. But I loved uh, I loved classical music too. Uh, yes. And, uh, always had a soft part, heart, place in my heart for uh, music, for musicians and things. Yeah. I like Hans Zimmer. I think he's the, Hans Zimmer plays the background music for most of the films and it's very uh -huh. haunting, very good. Right. Yes, 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 right. Now that's another thing, you, you buy, make up a, a very good point there. Uh, cinema has some magnificent music, some of those soundtracks, I mean, uh, you know, they're, they, they they hire artists world class you know it's not not just background music it's just some of some some music makes or some films you know? yes it gives, a, gives it a strong background 
I know it does it does influence all our and I think music holds memories as I said to quite a few other people um right. and there's a memory behind every song or a moment you know so I think it holds heavy influence on all of us yes yeah absolutely what out of all the charities to choose from which one would you choose and why well I I uh well, I donate to uh, uh, Food for the Poor a lot. Yeah. And, uh, they're really good. I remember a, a priest once said, he says, if you want to find some charity, give it to this one because they're, they're up and up and they do a lot of uh, good with their, their feeding people around the world. And uh, so uh, I, I'm consistent with that. And also the Covenant House is another one. Where for, they're all throughout the United States. They're young. They they kept the kids off the streets. A lot of kids are thrown out by their parents. Mm -hmm. uh, they're living on the streets and they're, they're subject to being the prey of, uh, uh, you know, sexual Sex traffic, trafficking. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, it's just so I've been that I've been giving them money for a long long time. Oh. So that's and, the uh, ones you'd advocate for, and that's for very good reasons because the. Trafficking rings are really oh, yeah. bad, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, yeah. They, and they're vulnerable. They're vulnerable. Not very. They get thrown out of their houses sometimes by their parents. Yeah, that's terrible. They're they're they're, they're some teenagers. I mean, they're you know really kids. Right. And they're out on the streets of New York, New New Orleans, uh, Chicago, L Big Los City. Angeles. Yeah. Yeah, Los Angeles. It's just horrific. So. Yeah, it we, is. Uh, how to help them. Oh, you're an amazing soul, Marco. Send it whatever you can. That's all. It doesn't have to be a lot, big time. No. Every, yeah. do every dollar helps, right? Right. Right. How do you feel about what has transpired since COVID 19? And do you ever see us returning to a normality? Well, uh, I got, I got um, um, my wife and I both caught. COVID. And, oh, uh, really? Did, oh, yeah. We got slammed with it. It's nasty stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, we beat it. Or, or we, we, took, we, we took it and kept on going. Put it that way. Uh, it's nasty stuff. I, now, what do I think of all of it? I, don't, I, think, I think we did way too much. You know, the, the, the very few people died. And most of the people that died, I mean, when you think about it, uh, what the final numbers are, people die of the flu every year too and people right. die of all kinds of diseases the, the, the death rate was very small very small and they i think they used it uh this whole coronavirus thing to uh they used it to move uh, the, the country around move people around take charge of the i, I think it was overdone overblown mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah people got sick and a lot of people older people got sick but they didn't die they, it wasn't always Corona that killed them. They, they just had Corona when something else killed them. Right. You know, they had attacks, they had other diseases, and uh, it, it, Corona weakens you, no doubt. But it's not this giant killer that they want to make it out to be. I think they want to scare the hell out of the American population, is what I think. Well, I, th I think governments always use fear to control people. Right, right. right. It's been happening for generations. Right, yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying in this particular situation, I think science, politics should not have took over the science. The science should have been um, well, you hear the a main lot of lead. I didn't come up with a lot of these thoughts on my own. A lot of doctors feel that way too. You know, they yeah. don't, I, I have not had, uh, I haven't had, uh, I just, we just caught COVID and right now we've got, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, antibodies. The vaccines, yes, you do have the antibodies, okay. yeah. The, that I read now, if you've got antibodies, that's as good as a shot. You know? Right. So, uh, well, actually, I just had my second shot and um, it knocked me for six. Well, it, it, I, it, it, I, and you know, to have the shot and they haven't come down with it, but it's such a, it's a mixed, everything, it's a mixed bag. I think you got to mm. live healthily, uh, Take precautions, and uh, but you know, I've had, you've had flu, haven't you? You've yeah, had, uh, absolutely. 
that, that flu kills a lot of people too. All of them, we get them every year and a lot of yeah. people die. And America is an enormous uh, country with a lot of people and uh, there is. a lot of deaths. And uh, I don't, I think they overdid it. I really do. And they, yeah. Now we're starting to come out of it, thank God. I know. We've just opened up here in California. We're one of the last states to open up. You're right, right, right. Yeah, I think. And they're doing they're doing like a lottery um, for people that have the shot. And to me, um, to to encourage people to have the shot. And to me, that's you don't know. It just doesn't seem right. Who does? Who gives away one point five million dollars to have a shot? When the country has already lost so much money, and we're, right. we're you know we're shutting down and unemployment, and they've got 1.5 million dollars to give to someone that has the COVID shot. Why don't they put that into people that need the money, not right. share it out be, for families that are poor and. I haven't got money for food and haven't got money to pay their bills and I just don't get why they're doing that. It just seems a bit coerced to me or unethical, <clears throat> but that's me. <laughs> I might leave this in and I might take it out. <laughs> I'm not sure. The country's coming out of it, thank the Lord. And, thank uh, God, it's yes. Going to be, we're going to see it in the rear view mirror and I think we ought to latch, take hold of that and, and stop being scared all the time and worried about it all. Yes. Kids go back to school. Kids are not, they're not going to catch coronavirus. Immune systems are fantastic. Is there anything that no one has ever asked you in an interview that you would have liked them to ask you? <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> yeah, let's go out to dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh Please share. Apart from taking you to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to Matsuhisa. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, have you ever been to Matsuhisa? I have not. Well, it's one of the best restaurants in the world. It's in Los Angeles, and uh, uh, it's just it's a you know an Asian restaurant, uh, Japanese. Uh, some of the best food of any kind I've ever had. I wouldn't say uh, no to that. <laughs> right. Exactly. There you go. And I'd have a bit of sake as well while I was at it. Yeah, you know, well, it's, on, like... it's right in the middle of uh, Los Angeles and, you know, Restaurant Row, right down the, right down in the heart of it. Oh, in Hollywood? Yeah, yeah. 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 And they've got, a, they've got one in New York. They've got one, uh, he, he, uh, he, he founded uh, uh, a restaurant with uh, Robert De Niro. I think they opened a couple of them, one of them in Las Vegas and one of them in New York. Oh, nice. Yeah, so they're very, very good, but it's one of the best restaurants of any kind. Not the one of the best Japanese or Asian yeah. restaurants. One of the best restaurants, period. Yeah. Excellent little, service. Yeah, a little, little expensive, but it's really good food. <laughs> no. We'll have to go there sometime. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a good answer. So, you are currently working. You've just played in a pilot season as Big Tuna, or we say tuna in England, Big, but we're going to say Big Tuna on Blackwater Blues with yeah, Corey Nemec. Right, I played like a mafioso type of guy, yeah. Yes, I thought you were Italian, that's when I first spoke to you on the phone, I thought, he's Italian, right, when I when I watched the pilot presentation at Pensacon. But it was a very good part you played with Corey Nemec and Jason London. Yeah. It's a it's a really good project. I think uh, it's very interesting, and uh, that we we filmed the uh, 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 Colin, the, uh, the producer and the, one of the lead actors. He's the he's he, he's a writer as well. He writes. He's a very he's a nice guy. I like him a lot. And uh, I think if some if they get it in front of uh, people, they're gonna get somebody's gonna pick it up because I thought it's pretty damn good. Uh, uh, you know, it is film that we sh uh, shot it's only about a half hour right now but i think it's they're just uh, shooting it to show some people they got some people that look right to look at it but they ought to show it to everybody they can you know get hold of and get Absolutely. them in front of the film well i found the graphics the graphic art in there the comic 
I thought right. that was that was amazing. Oh, I mean, the way they're still framed and 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 it was just amazing. It's different. It's unique and um, it very inventive. And uh, it is. Yeah, they, it's fantastic. What I like about it, it's shot down in a small uh, little town, and in uh, Mississippi, mm -hmm. and uh, it got some of it as a, a, a what you call a redneck cracker whatever you think it's out in the bayous and all that's why they yeah. get the black water blues and uh and uh it's got a little touch of that uh and that's that's good and then they these guys then these guys like me you know and i'm i'm a, what they call a uh uh it was a local dixie mafia but i mean <laughs> Or New York Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> New York. No, it's, it's really, uh, it's got a lot of, a uh, lot to recommend it. You remember the, the TV uh, show that they had, the guys that had the long beards and they lived out in the bayous and they were, uh, you know, they were running around. It, it wasn't really a, 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 a television movie or anything. These guys were for real. That's the way they lived. They had the long beards and everything. It was very popular. There was a hit show, ran for, I don't know how many, three, four years. It's got a little bit bit of that in it. I mean, these guys are kind of a, some of them are crackers, some of them are not, some of them are like me, and uh, it's a, it's an odd mixture of people. And it, I I find it to be very. It really gets hold of you. It, it, it's like the, it opens up to two fellows, the two leads. They've got a, a, their father. I I was their stepfather. I married their mother, but after before me, there was a, they were their father yes. died. And uh, they they roasted him and they had him in a jar, his ashes in a jar, mm -hmm. and they're throwing him in the bayou, and that's how it starts. <laughs> <laughs> the black bayou. So it, it's it's, of, it's kind of it's it's quirky, but it's funny and it's it's really good. It's, it it's is. Good. See, it will be interested. I think. Yeah, well, I loved it. I, I know the one scene, Karen and Jason, uh, you know. Yeah, um, come in the scene and you're sitting in the chair, threatening yeah. to cut out their tongue. <laughs> hey, you say much more than that. You won't have a tongue left to speak with. You understand? I said to my producer, I have to interview this gent. I have to. He's a hoot. <laughs> and here <Yeah>. you are. <laughs> right. exactly. I, was, I was very honored when you said yes. <laughs> So well, great, uh, great pri uh, privilege and pleasure for me, especially having such, being interviewed by such a beautiful woman. Thank beautiful you lady. so, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the face cream. It's there. You go. <laughs> <laughs> I keep putting it on, hoping for you know, hoping to reverse, but you know, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> depends what time of day it is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much marco for coming on chatbox with sam it's been an extreme pleasure to listen to you and your views okay well it's been a pleasure being here that's for sure absolutely